Amen. You can be seated. Amen. God is good. Let's see. All right, there we go. Test, test, one, two. Amen. Well, God, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning, and we just thank you that, uh, yes, Lord, in all we do, we, we honor you, Lord God. We, without you, we cannot uh, cannot make it, and uh, we look to you in, in all things, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we just pray, Lord God, that you would just, as we look at your word, that we would not leave here the same, but Lord, we leave impacted and empowered and and just to listen to what you want in our lives. And Lord God, we, we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you will, turn to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. We're doing part 2 of, of Let It Rain. And uh, Galatians 6. And give me one moment. I'm getting my notes there with the little gadget here. And uh, thank you, Larry and Paul. Good job there. Uh, men, men of God, men. Musician men. All right. I just want to, there's a couple of you who didn't see this last week. So uh, 13 days ago, I finished radiation treatment. And uh, amen, amen. That was, I, I appreciate it. So I'll, I'll mention this last, I mentioned this last week, but I want a few that weren't here. I, uh, their, the chemo was tough. I was a little tired, but I lost taste buds a little bit. But then after a little bit of cycle, most of them came back. The radiation was knocking me out. After about a week, I uh, had zip, no taste buds, and I was taking three-hour naps, and that wasn't good on the honey list. We know how that can be, Paul, don't we? If we don't make up that honey list, we're in trouble. And, uh, you know, the little violin. So here's, here you go, Alyssa, you weren't here, and uh, Dean and Glenda, I had to wear this 20 times, and uh, they strapped me down to a, a table, and uh, I was strapped down like 15 minutes each day. So I'll say that was not fun. I'm not claustrophobic, but kind of was when I did this. So that, that wasn't easy. I will give a little bit of testimony. I went back to tent making job uh, Monday. And uh, uh, first few days I was, I was sore. And, uh, but each day got a little bit better. And it was still tough because I was on the soup diet. And I looked at the soup. It's 140 calories, the whole thing. So I was still losing weight. So not that that's a bad thing, but after a while, you don't have any energy. But by about Wednesday or so, they started coming back. So after about a week and a half, I'm getting slowly and randomly taste buds back. So praise God. Amen. Praise God. I'm high bouncing back in the name of Jesus. Is that, is that right? It's good to see Imani bouncing back out of the ICU. That she did a... She didn't like, look like she liked it in the ICU. Is that right? Uh, is that right, Alyssa? And uh, just a reminder of the two scriptures that we were using when I, I showed the, the mask uh, uh, right here. Ephesians 3.20, we we're beginning to see it. Uh, abundantly and measurably more in our lives, our homes, uh, uh, families, everywhere. See, listen, we God, God doesn't say just enough. He says more than enough. That's certainly an understanding when we're obedient. That's when we're under God's uh, plan and, and listening to what God, when we're making Him Lord and, and with that last song, honor Him in everything I do. Amen? It can't be where we disobey and think that He's abundantly going to bless us. Isaiah 43, 18, saying it and uh, a new thing. And, and so that's what we are doing. And uh, I want to share just a part, uh, one little segment. We talked about this Wednesday a little bit about us as, as a church, or how we should be as Christians. Um, but listen, God is, is moving in our hearts. He's moving in us as a, a church. And, and I still do have dryness, so I'm going to take extra sources of water. But I'll make this clear that, that we believe God's love is for everyone. It's for all of us. It's for our doors are open for everyone. But listen, we do not embrace sin. We don't embrace disobedience to God. And I'm not going to name every sin, and we know some that are out there uh, right now that it's socially, uh, what is it? you got to be culturally correct and, and not hurt people, offend people. Well, the Word of God offends, all right? Let's, let's be honest. Jesus offended people. Is that true? Yes. Is that true? Amen? And that was just from the truth. And so we don't embrace our own sin, meaning when we're disobedient, we're someone else. But we love everybody, and God loves everybody. Amen? Is that true? 
Yes. 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 All right, Alyssa, thank you. And so I just make that clear. Also, I want to mention this, re reemphasize the enemy will attack, discourage, and come against great vision and seeds. When he sees that son God's up to something, he'll do it, he do what he can, he'll try whatever he can to, to cause us to get off focus or to get dis cause discord or cause us to get distracted. But we're staying focused. The enemy wants to give, wants us to, to give up before the harvest comes. I uh, put on Facebook this one, I, I think Kathy saw this one thing where you got an iceberg and, and people see the top of the iceberg, but underneath this, it's a lot bigger and deeper. Like trees, the roots are a lot deeper than you see coming up before it comes up. And, and so we have to get a firm foundation or roots before you see a harvest in our own lives or or an actual tree or a harvest in that way. And so the enemy wants to discourage and cause discord before the fruition, before the harvest does come. We're going to start in Galatians 6, verse 4 for today. Last week we started in verse 6, but we're starting in verse 4. Galatians 6, verse 4. Each one should test its own actions. Then... He can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. Anyone, interesting, I didn't even put that in one of the points of the notes, but what was I saying? We, we all should step up right there, carry our own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the Word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please, from, please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us, right here, let us not become weary in doing good. I'm going to reemphasize that. Let us not become weary in doing good. It can become weary. But keep moving forward one step at a time. Listen, we don't do the right thing because it feels good. I've heard, follow your heart. We do not, we do not follow your heart. You, you do the right thing because it is right. We do the right thing because it's what God's Word says. I've often told people, that don't do something just because it's the latest and greatest or makes you feel good. You do what you should do. Do the right thing. Listen, in the... In the morning, I've talked about this a few times. On Monday morning, it's the toughest day for, for most people to get up when they have a rather work schedule. You still get out of bed. Listen, I've learned now for me to help get the kids ready and get out the door. i got to get up at quarter to six. If it's six, I'm rushing. So quarter to six, I've got to do it. It's not like, I hear that alarm. I love that alarm. <laughs> well, listen, snooze is the alarm. But, I, but you know what? It's time to get up. Do not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Right there, especially to the family of believers. How are we going to extend God's love. How are we going to reach people with God's love first? Right there with, with a family of believers. So therefore, listen, if we can't love our brothers and sisters in the Lord, we got issues, right? And then we got to be able to love and care for one another in the house of God. Now, now I'm not talking about just this church, but those that are the believers, if we're believers, we should be loving and caring for one another. But then certainly with one another here. We should, listen, we what do they say? Blood is is thick. In other words, you know, they talk about families that uh, will love their families to no end, right? And, you know, even if they're wrong about something, you stick up for families. Is that true? Most, in most cases, we, we do. Uh, we still love them, even if we don't agree with them or we don't agree with some stuff they're doing. When you got kids or grandkids or, or whatever, or sometimes you, or brothers or sisters, sometimes you don't agree. But the same way, it should be even more so the blood of Jesus, the family of the Lord is that we don't embrace what everybody does, but we still stick up for one another. Amen? Amen. 
If you like to take notes or at least watch from the, the screen, I'm going to give hinders. What hinders harvest? What hinders harvest? And by the way, last week we did part one of Let It Rain. And guess what? It rained. Amen? Did you, it rained here and hadn't rained in a while. And so God heard, heard those prayers, those requests. We're still in a drought some, but it's getting better. Galatians uh, 6 4. First one is bad crops, bad seeds. Galatians 6 4. Talked a little bit about this this week, this week, last week, but I'm also going to expand a little bit more. Each one should test their own actions, then they can take pride in themselves alone. We should examine ourselves. Paul said, missionary Paul, Paul in the Bible, maybe this Paul too, that I examine myself daily. I examine my heart to see if I'm of the faith. In Psalms 139, 14, search me, O God. There's many people that'll search everyone out. Somebody's known or seen, don't point anyway, that see, seen people that they'll search other people, but it says, search me, O God, David says, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. On Wednesday night, uh, Alan mentioned uh, that what well, we should test our own hearts and, and see if we are, uh, what part of a conflict or a situation is our part. Because often it's easy to be the Holy Spirit for other people. We, it's easy to go, I, I see your sin or I see your issues, but God would say, put the mirror and, and look in our own lives and see how, how what's in and us. What, What's the seeds? What's the crops? What are we delivering? Matthew 12, 34, one of my favorite verses that I often remind myself of. For out of the abundance, listen, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I've heard people say, I, I didn't mean to say that. I, uh, I slipped. It wasn't a four-letter word, but it was, you know, it was gossip or it was mean language. But listen, if it's not in the heart, it's not going to come out of our mouth. It's, is that true? There's nothing that can come out of the mouth that, that that's not, it's not, it, can't, it can't just come from thin air. It's, it's something that we've been allowing to come in us, whether it's through TV, whether it's through other people around us, whether it's, it's whatever we're putting inside of us. It's whatever crops, seeds that, that we're allowing. And um, Ms. Shara heard a story that this guy decided to become a, a, a monk. Now, I mean, just go off by himself in this monastery and he was allowed to talk to the head monk once once a year and he could say two words so after a year he goes and and here's this uh he comes and he he gets his two words and he says bed hard after another year he he, he comes back and he, he 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 sees the head monk and and the next time he says food food bad after another year, and now it's, so this is like the third year, he, he comes back and he says, I quit. And, that, and the, the guy says, the head monk says, well, I'm not surprised. All you do is complain. <laughs> and so, you know what, I heard a joke. I think my dad put this on Facebook, <laughs> this joke. Sometimes uh, instead of chapsticks, we need to use glue stick with us. All right. And uh, so that, that's, I think my dad put that on Facebook, Dad. I can't believe he said that. If, if he did, maybe it wasn't you. Maybe it was another different Larry. But, uh, but you know what? We got two ears and one mouth for a reason. And oftentimes we, we give, it can be true, but we got to be careful because is it necessary? Is it inspiring? Is it an appropriate atmosphere? But we plant seeds with our words. We plant seeds actually with what we invest. See, all my stuff, all my time, gifts, money, it's, it's God's. Everything that we have, it's, we're honoring God with what He has given us. Often, uh, it's in Psalms 24, it's, it talks about that it's all the Lord's. And, uh, you know, when we're using our gifts, when we're using our finances. And so it also depends on how we glorify God. Do not be deceived. Verse 7, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. If you have not been seeing the, the right harvest, check the crops and see what you're planting. And uh, last week I showed, I have the seeds here again. I have uh, beans and cut flower mixture. What that means, it's a mixture of whatever flowers, but not roses. And uh, you know what? I'm never going to get anything but beans if I do plant and do it right. And I'm never going to get anything but crazy cut flowers. 
on this one. And in our lives, what we plant is what we're going to get. So what hinders a harvest? It could be the seeds that we're planting. What type? Are we doing doubt and envy? Are we envious? Listen, God has only called and we can only be me. I can only be myself, the best me. We can't be someone else and, and we're not to say, well, if I had this, I'll be happy. We can't be envious, jealousy, gossip, selfishness. But instead, are we planting seeds of grace, of faith, of fruit of the Spirit, of our time and our gifts and our money, of love? Listen, tomorrow I'm going to reiterate. I've done this a few times. I did. I, I, I get out. We, we get up in the morning. Man, just begin to say, I'm going to do what i got to do this day and enjoy myself. I've been told uh, from a good friend of mine, he said one time I was stressing a little bit, listen, at the end of the day, do your best, honor God with all you have, your talents, and then go home to your family and enjoy life. Enjoy your children. Enjoy your, what God's given you. Secondly, listen to this. What hinders harvest? What hinders a, 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 a miracle, a, a destiny in us? Comparing. Has anybody done that? Yeah. I wish I had what they had, or I wish I had their life, and we don't know what they're going through. Verse 4, without comparing themselves to someone else. Listen, as our success, a harvest, is not determined on how well someone else does. Our success is not determined on what someone else does. Successful harvest is determined on how well we have done with what God has called us to do with what He's given us. A farmer doesn't go look at his harvest or, or his crops and go, I've done well because I've done better than that other farmer. No, he, he determines on how well he's done, on how well his crops are, on how much acreage and, and how much he planted. He knows, a, a farmer, an experienced farmer knows how much he should get from the, from the seeds. Is that true? Amen? Now, I'm not a, um, I'm not a gardener. I would have to have miracle grow, like miracle, real miracle grow, not just the stuff you buy from the store. I, need, I would need God miracle grow. But I know that God is not saying do better than that person. He's saying do the best of what you got. Amen? Thirdly, hindrances to harvest, impatience. Now, I will have to admit, I get impatient sometimes. I like things done the right way now. And I like things to happen quickly. Does anyone else uh, like that? Sometimes Caitlin, I get a little frustrated with, a little four-year-old. And we told her to do something a couple of times. Galatians 6, 9, Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 2, There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. I'm going to share a couple of these from last week, but I love potatoes and I've started to taste them a little bit. Brings a smile to my face. Just a, and I can't wait to have the full taste. But they take typically 10 weeks to come to harvest. I could throw seeds out there uh, on the cement, and after church, I'm not going to have potatoes. It's going to take longer in the right uh, ground and foundation. Beans take about 55 days. That's according to the packets. Flour mixture, 25 to 50 days, as there's different flowers. You get, but you get what you planted in the right season at the proper time. <laughs> if you do not give up corn, listen, corn with the right amount of everything else is right, 60 to 100 days. Squash, seven weeks later. I love some fried squash. Matter of fact, I'll get hungry right now. I like fried squash dipped in some good dip, all right? Some good ranch. Watermelon, we like some watermelon in the house. Amen. Amen, all right, glory to God. 60, I don't right now because it has no taste, but I will one day, 65 to 90 days. Listen to this one, ladies and men. We, Caleb is five months old, right? Five months old, little Caleb. And uh, amazing when we found out we were having a baby, I was like, it didn't, he didn't come the next month. He did not come the next month after that. And Melissa started growing a little bit each month, and then growing a little bit. But I'm not going to say how far. I won't, yeah, you know, I won't, I've got to be careful. I'll be on 
I'll be sleeping outside on the porch, all right? But pregnancy, according to what I looked up, lasts 280 days or 40 weeks. That is a long time. So I give my wife kudos and all the ladies in the house, all right? Cause, uh, and then you still got to cuddle them and take care of them even at five months old. And, and there's something about mothers that, that have that extra patience and understanding. I'm like, come on, kid, you drink your bottle, all right? You know? And uh, listen to this. And that's doctors, uh, medical too, and it, it takes the proper time of children to grow up. In a house about our size, it takes, listen to this, for a foundation, a house, six to eight weeks to build. They put our house up probably fairly quick, and, and yours is close to us. We watched your house going up, Paul and Kathy, uh, fairly quick. But uh, they realistically, they say it takes a house of 2,000 cents square feet about three months. Now, can you do the supersonic inspector stamping and, and uh, some kind of project possibly? But we have to have patience in our lives, proper time. And uh, mind you, once again, hindrance, hindrances to a harvest, to a destiny. I uh, That is something that I ought to say, as Paul said, I'm learning Daily, I'm growing in patience, and that's a fruit of the Spirit that I'm learning to have more each day. Fourthly, listen to this, lack of light. You're going to catch this, John 8, 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, one thing that I learned from uh, Tim or uh, he's at a bike ride today. Is he does some gardening? And he mentioned one time he tried to plant at least some corn or something <laughs> at a different time of the year. And apparently, light is certainly we know light is different amounts, different times of the year, and, and it affects crops. And so when he did it, it actually did not come to harvest the same amount of time. It actually delayed it and came to harvest around the same time of the year. Now we know that scientists and we've learned how to manipulate with light, but God's design is to have crops at the certain time, at the right time of the year, with the right light that it requires. And so we understand lack of light, and with us, in a spiritual sense, we need the light of Jesus. We need to be in God's presence on a daily basis that we're going to get, we will certainly get uh, much of what we need through Bible study, through church, and through friends, but we need to make sure that God's love, that we're in God's presence, instead of soaking in with all our time with other things, that we set aside time, we turn off the gadgets, and we make sure that we're in the light of the Lord in His presence. The lack of light. And now the last point, listen to this, for hindrances of a harvest. Problem of pests. Believe it or not, you could do, and amen, some of you would say you've tried this, you can do the right stuff for harvest. You can plant flowers, or you can plant uh, grass, or you can plant uh, crops and, and do the right things, but you could have, uh, you can have pests come and rip up your garden. You could have a raccoon, you could have deer. 1 Corinthians 15.33, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. 1 Corinthians 15.33. Some of the pests I mentioned and listed I saw were deer and rabbits. Uh, they can come and get that lettuce. They can come and get different things. Insects. And there can be diseases. And in our own lives, pests in our own lives, we have negative thinking come within a, our own selves. But you have people that will say, you know what? That's not going to change. You've got people who give negative thinking unfaith thinking. we got people that say that that is never going to happen, but we need people that have God thinking. And when we're around people, we got to make sure it's people that are full of faith, that are full of God. And, and people, hey, there's some people that we might, don't, once again, don't name people, but it could be past. That all they do is they look at the critical things of, of all the reasons why it can't happen or won't happen instead of the, the solutions on how it can happen. And I was talking yesterday <clears throat> at lunch with Dean, and we were talking about some people at churches, they, they'll, they can tell you all the things that in life or in a church that need to be fixed. And we were like, the, but, but that could be a pest unless they're also willing to invest or help with that 
situation or with what needs to be fixed. And, and uh, so if someone steps up, I, I think that's a fair thing for us here, here at this church. If it's something you can help with, you come forward. And you say, hey, let's, I'll help. Well, that's something I think I can help fix. And, and you know what? That's no longer a pest, but that's a solution. And uh, so if someone's willing to invest time, money, or, or gifts, then praise God, step up and, and show me. But otherwise, uh, uh, pray. You know, pray, let's move forward. Think of this, many of us are on the brink of a harvest, and, and some of those hindrances, I believe, are, are breaking through. I believe as we move forward and have the right seeds, as, as we begin to have heavenly rain, rain from heaven, that, 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 that we'll begin to see a downpour. We'll begin to see miracles where, where there was dryness. We'll begin to see as Isaiah 43, 18 talks about where there was dryness like desert, that, that it began to rain and it would become a river in our lives and situations. Because sometimes what happens is, is like a story that I heard where this town in Central America was, was uh, their crops were, were dying off and, and they needed it for, for har harvest. That, that was their source of income, many of them, for their town. And so they, all the churches and all the people, they decided the next Sunday that we're going to gather um, at the Central Park area and instead of having all our separate churches, all our separate gatherings, we're going to gather together and we're going to believe as, as we begin to pray that, 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 that you know what, it's, it's, going to, it's going to rain. Now we did not know that they gathered around 11 o'clock and they were going to believe by noon that it was going to happen. But you not believe when they began to, to pray that it was the sunniest day, it had been all year, it was scorching hot. Not, not a break in, a, in a, a cloud in the sky. And they were all like, where is God? And people had brought them like the Christian t-shirts. They had brought them crosses for holding on to them. They had brought different uh, emblems. And, and would you not believe that got yeah, about 5 till 12, and it is still scorching hot. And they're praying, and they had been singing and, and uh, believing together. And all, everyone, pretty much the whole town come together because they're in desperate need. And I think some of us, and some of them who watch or listen, we, we're, we're desperate and you know we you know we've gone the last 10 months so you know losing a losing a dad and and having a child and they say you have three someone told me this and i'm driving a whole life if you have three big life things happen then you're up for some good blessing so i'm someone said that to me at work so i'm believing for it i am i'm claiming i'm living that but as they gathered it got to be almost noon and, and would you not know that that it, it was still rise could be then Almost at noon, this cloud just came over. And then looking through the cloud, would you not know what happened? Is that this one little girl right before noon, you know what she did? She opened up her umbrella, some little eight-year-old girl. And all of a sudden, right at noon, the cloud came right over and dropped. The biggest rainstorm that you would not believe. And you know what? That I believe that's for some of us is we got to realize we can do, I mentioned hindrances, but we could, some of us, we could be on track and doing what God tells us. We could be planting good seeds. We could be growing and patient, being patient and learning. We could be having the right foundation and being in the light of Jesus. But it also takes what it takes, heavenly rain. It takes us being ready with our umbrella and just being ready and waiting because any moment, if we're doing the right things, the heavens are going to open up. And someone asked Dave to play this video, and then in a few minutes, I'll close.
be temporary. That dry season is not going to last forever. Why? The rain is coming. That addiction is not going to be with you your whole life. Rain is coming. Struggle and lack is not your destiny. It's temporary. Rain is headed to life. that's the case for, for some of us. We've been doing, in many ways, the right things, and there's that we're not, but we'll, we'll start now. we start fresh for now. But sometimes we can fill a drought where we feel like we're pounding our head against the wall, or we're, we're doing everything we can, and we're just feeling empty, or feeling a, a drought within our own lives. But you know what? If we're doing the right things, if we're obeying God, if we're, if we're staying in tune with what God wants, get ready, because that means the rain is coming. That means that we're going to see harvest in our lives, our, our, our families. Now listen, we can pray for people, we, we can intercede, we, and I believe God speaks to hearts. Do they always obey? They still have to listen to God, but, they, but I believe they hear God's voice. But we can control one person, ourselves. And that's where, as we read that first part, is to test ourselves, to check our own lives. And if that's the case, get ready, because God's going to get ready to open the door and let it rain. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to pray and and after I'm done praying, uh, go ahead and start that, uh, that song, that video. And uh, I'm going to pray, and, and uh, after this video, I'm going to go ahead and pray for any other requests and needs. But you can stay in your seat, or you can find a place at the altar. We're going to spend about a few minutes just praying and seeking the Lord. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning and for this time. Lord, I ask you, Lord God, that you would speak to each one of our hearts in the name of Jesus. And show us areas, Lord God, that anything that, that we need to lay down at your feet, that we need to lay at the cross, that you, Lord God, would just do your work in us. But Lord, I also pray that you help each one of us to keep moving one step at a time, keep moving forward, Lord God. If it hasn't come through, then, Lord, that you're coming through and rain is coming. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's seek the Lord through the song and we'll pray you.